Today we are taking a look at the Camus LC100 load cell pedals. In this video I will do the unboxing, setup and installation, and also give my first impressions. A second part will come later when I had some time with these. Let's jump right into it and see what's in the box. But before that, I just wanted to be transparent and say this is a sponsored video from Camus. I bought the pedals with my own money, but I got a great discount on them. So thank you Camus, this will not affect my way of reviewing these pedals. All right, let's get to it. I was surprised by the size and the weight of the package. The pedals with the plate weights about seven kilogram. It took about 15 days to arrive using the Camus Direct Shipping. It was well packaged, and once inside, you're presented with a nice clean looking box with a carrying handle. When opening the box, we find the user's manual. It has Chinese and English text with pictures, nothing over or under the ordinary. Then we flip this black foam and find the pedals. And I gotta say, they look really nice and giving a great first impression. We also find some bags with RJ11 and USB-C cable and a Type-C to USB-3 connector, and a bag with tools and bolts for the mounting. More on that later. Let's start with the accelerator, using a Hall effect sensor for the position, so hopefully not as sensitive to cat hair and dust as the old potentiometer ones used in the past for many pedals. A blue spring with a preload adjustment nut. There is also some stroke limit washers on the shaft, and a few options to mount the spring in different positions to alter the feel, and you also find the control box on this pedal. The clutch pedal is almost identical with the accelerator, but with another spring. And as its factory setting, it also have a longer stroke, a linear feel, no two-stage feel. The brake is a bit different. This one is using a load cell sensor to measure pressure instead of pedal position. It's rated for 100 kilograms, and it also have an adjustable damper connected. And according to the manual, the damper is also used to control the stroke of the pedal. And as the accelerator and clutch, it has a preload adjustment nut for the spring, but the spring is much shorter. Then there is a rubber block that compresses after the spring is compressed to get a more progressive brake feel. Then we have the base plate itself. It feels heavy and sturdy, has the Camus logo on the bottom and a somewhat rugged surface texture over the whole plate. You have three options to mount the pedals in depth and they are also somewhat adjustable sideways, but not much, about 30 mm per pedal. And you also find mounting holes on the sides and towards the bottom for mounting it on your rig because these pedals needs to be mounted to something. You can't have them just on the floor as the pedals require a lot of force from your feet. Dimensions vise its 330 mm in depth and 364 mm wide. I mentioned before that the accelerator and clutch pedal were almost identical. That is not the case when it comes to the pedal surface. As the throttle pedal has a lot larger dimension than the clutch and the brake, the brake and clutch share the same size, but all three pedals have the same height at 260 mm measured from the bottom of the base plate. Let's start the installation of this pedals in my rig. This base plate is more suited and I guess also designed to fit in an aluminum profile rig. In my Symmetic K2 rig, I just have a base plate with mounting holes that makes everything a little bit more tricky, as we will address later. My first concern was the size of the base plate. I thought it would be a tight fit or even being too large, but it turns out to be about the perfect size for me. I have about one millimeter clearance on both sides and four mounting holes match, perfect. Now we just need to attach the pedals to the plate. Let's open the bag with mounting hardware and take a look. Two Allen wrench, size five and six, four M8 T-shaped slide nuts, and then six bolts for the pedals. Five of them are M6 and one is an M8. The bigger one is used on the brake pedal. Then we have four M8 bolts for the base plate. Here you can see the mounting holes under the brake pedal. Now it's time to use the bolts for the pedals and mount it to the plate. I would have liked these bolts to be just a tiny bit longer. The locking washers on the bolts made it hard to make the treads go in easy. If not careful here and make the bolts go in straight, there is a risk of damaging the threads. And the threads on the bolts had paint on them that made it even harder. But once installed, it sits nice and snug to the plate. 
but on the brake pedal I noticed that the bolts holding the load cell sensor is not flush with the rest of the surface. I tried to tighten them, but they were properly fastened. It's not a big of a deal, because when the pedal's mounted it sits there fine. But small things like that combined with the small bolts made the installation harder than it could have been. There we go, all three pedals installed. Looking good and feels sturdy. No flex that I can feel, even if I see some sideways wobble now when editing. It just feels robust. Thumbs up from me. With an aluminum profile rig, this would not be a problem. But you can see the bolt heads here. You need some kind of spacer here to be able to mount it on a flat surface like the plate I have on my Symmetic rig. And there is none provided, so some DIY is required. And the mounting bolts are too short if we need to use spacers to clear the bolt heads from the pedals. And they are also too big for the holes on my Symmetic plate. With help from my random bits and pieces junk and my cat, I found the perfect solution. These locking nuts will be my spacers, and these little longer bolts will work just fine. Now we just need to attach the cables from the clutch and brake. The accelerator cable is already connected to the control box that's on the pedal. There is two loops on the base plate for the cables. The cables are maybe a little bit too exposed for a clean look, but they are at least out of the way from the feet. I may do something about that later, but overall I got to say they look really good. Now we just need to put the pedals on the rig. These pedals are about 90 degrees to the plate, so I have to put the plate at zero degrees for them to feel comfortable in my rig. With my Fanatec CSL Elite pedals, I have to have the plate at about 15 degrees to have the same seating position. One thing I noticed right away is that the pedals are very noisy, as you can hear for yourself here. But after five minutes of driving, most of the noise went away. I will give them some lubrication later and see if that helps even more. That is something we cover in part two later. And another thing I noticed immediately when trying the pedals with my very dusty socks is that the accelerator is way too stiff for me. We need to adjust the preload for that one before we start driving, and the clutch stroke is very long, so we need to adjust the stop with some limiter washers. But there were sadly no spares or extras in the box, so once again we have to do some DIY here. But other than that, they felt really good. I like the size of the pedals and the feeling of the brake also felt good. If we can set these up properly, I think these pedals can be a pleasant drive. Let's install the drivers and boot up race room for some testing. Just head to Camus website and scroll all the way down. There you find a downloads link, and it seems that Camus uses one program for all its devices. So just download that and install it. Simple as that. Then you just open the software and set your min and max values. I use about 70 kilograms pressure. No way to know for sure here. Like in the Fanatec software where you put in the amount of pressure on the load cell that is the maximum. But that is not really needed, just press as hard as you're comfortable with and you're good to go. Just wanted to say that I've not used that many sim racing pedals. Yet. Been driving with Logitech G25 and G29 pedals for like over 15 years. And up to now I've been using the Fanatec CSL Elite load cell pedals for three years. So now you know my reference points. For this first test I wanted to try with shoes on, as these pedals, in my opinion, need more force from the feet. The damper is set to two and I've lowered the preload on the throttle a bit. Other than that, it's stock settings. As it takes some time to get used to new sim racing gear, I was surprised how comfortable this was with at the go. The brake feels really good. And then again, this is the first pedals I try with a damper on. And I think it really adds to the immersion. It feels a lot more like a real brake pedal than my previous ones. And it only took one or two laps before I got comfortable battling close with other cars. So this first race in race room with GT4 cars went well, so I decided to try something a little bit more wild, like the 90s F1 cars in race room. But first I wanted to try to change the damper settings and also trying it without shoes on to see how that was. Then I noticed this. The base plate had acted as sandpaper on my shoes. I'm sure the surface will get less rugged after a while. Time will tell, I guess. But that is something to keep in mind if you're afraid of damaging your shoes. For me, it does not matter as my shoes cost me eight euros. Now I set the damper to three, and wow, that made a huge difference. I don't think I need to go any higher than this, and I think it goes up to eight. This really transformed the pedals, in a good way. It feels much better than I thought it would do, actually. 
and racing with socks only is also possible. But if you're having small feet, it may be hard as the pedals are quite high and racing with shoes on makes a big difference in reaching higher on the pedals. For this first impression test, I'm only using the throttle and brake as I'm rebuilding my rig a bit at the moment and don't have my shifters connected. I will cover heel and toe driving in part two, among other things like modifications and settings, and my final thoughts with pros and cons of the pedals. After driving a bit with these F1 cars, I decided to try AMS2 with a Porsche at Alton Park. I was only planning to do a few practice laps, uh, but I ended up driving more laps than I can count. I just wanted to go around one more time, all the time. So I think that summarized my first impression pretty good. Felt much better to use than I thought it would, but they still need to be adjusted a bit more. The throttle stroke is a bit too long for me, so that needs adjusting, and I haven't even tried the clutch yet. Gonna be a few interesting weeks dialing it in, so I hope to see you in part two. That is the real review video of these Camus LC100 pedals. And I also got some camera upgrades coming that are gonna make the quality of the video a lot better. Looking forward to that. And by the way, I've put an affiliate link in the description of this video if you're interested in buying something from Camus yourself. And if you're using the code FLATSPOT, you get a 5% discount. Take care, and I see you in the next part in a few weeks when I know the ins and outs of these pedals. Cheers.